Okay, it's part two of the live session with the Samsung Series 5. Uh, we are doing this with ultrabooknews.com. Check out ultrabooknews.com for more information on Ultrabooks. We've got the database, the uh, advisor there, reviews, and loads of other information and news on Ultrabooks. But the first thing we're going to do is um, do a cold boot on the Samsung Series 5. Then we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to talk about the screen, I'm going to talk about the sound quality, and I'm going to talk about the hard drive. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, details on what's uh, what devices are inside the device as well by looking at the de device manager. Right, let's just switch the uh, switch the cam, and we'll go to cold boot. So let me just uh, get the clock up, and we'll do the cold boot. Right, five, four, three, two, one, go. Right. Um, so I did this earlier, it was 30 seconds, um, 5 seconds post and 25 seconds boot time. So the hybrid SSD is working slightly better in this than it is on the uh, Acer S3. It's got the um, uh, Express Cache SSD functionality which is slightly better than, than what Acer did with their Hibernate SSD, Hibernate only. And that there was 25, 20, 26 seconds to the logon sound. So that's uh, Four seconds quicker than the last one I did, and the probably the reason because the reason of the reason that's quicker is because probably Express Catch is, is learning about what uh, what programs I've got installed. Let me just log in for you. Okay. So I mentioned the screen in the last uh, session: one three six six by seven six eight. It is is quite a nice screen uh, compared to the Toshiba Z830 I'd say just slightly um, slightly more punchy in terms of colors and contrast uh, probably be at the, about the same in terms of brightness uh, and it is 1366 by 768 remember so uh, those of you looking for the 600 by 900 and I know many people are uh, this isn't the device you're looking for so just quickly to give you information on the hard drive it's a 500 gig hard drive uh, partition such that there's a recovery partition you're left with 415 gigabytes free on the hard drive uh, once things uh, are booted for the first time and of course bear in mind that's going to go down fairly quickly as you use Windows 7 as it does all its driver caching and DLL caching and crazy stuff that it does over over time so 415 gigs of, uh, of hard drive there so pretty usable um, right, we're going to go into the uh, device manager now, just talk you through some of the things that are in, in this device in terms of uh, devices. Um, 45 watt hour uh, battery, so it's pretty much um, par for the course on Ultrabooks, it's no bigger than, than most uh, Ultrabooks, but it's smaller than, for example, the HP uh, Folio. Uh, we have, um, I guess, Cyberlink, UCAM is driving, is the software that's driving the, the web camera. We have uh, Bluetooth 3 Plus HS. We have HD 3000 graphics, of course. Um, we have yeah the 500 gig drive, 16 gig SSD. The mouse is an Elantec mouse, so the touchpad is Elantec. But so far, really no problems with it. Obviously, Synaptics is the word you're looking for if you want the best in touchpads generally but this Elantec is not working uh, too badly at all I have to do some more testing uh, but that's the details on it anyway the monitor of course I've told you uh, it's a Centrino 6230 dual antenna uh, Wi-Fi in here so reception quality is going to be pretty good uh, so in my tests um, so far I can see hotspots around my house with strengths that are slightly bigger than I usually uh, usually see You've also got a wireless display and my Wi-Fi capability with that, so 1080p over Intel Wi-Di. Uh, that is pretty much it. Wanted to mention the uh, just the mouse pad and the uh, the keyboard just quickly. Again, I find the mouse pad pretty good, and I like the uh, mouse buttons on it. They seem to be well engineered in terms of you know um, resistance and click and feedback. So that's that's really nice. Keyboard, uh, it isn't a backlit keyboard, um, but it's a really nice Samsung Samsung keyboard, and um, there's no kind of key wobble like there is on the Asus UX21, UX31. Uh, the keys are the, the sort of right um, f uh, ratio of height to width. 
there won't be any surprises there like you do get on the uh, Z830 and there's a nice feedback and a nice press uh, resistance on the keys as well so this is this keyboard is actually pretty much the same as the one I've been using on the MP350 for the last uh, three months and it is um, really really nice uh, keyboard indeed I have no problems with it at all so that's that uh, that keyboard um, speaker let me give you quick feedback on the speaker it's okay it's um, pretty loud it's pretty clear uh, it's not top of the range like the UX31 or the UX21 from from Asus but um, I don't know if you can hear that speakers are at the bottom here on the left and right and the sounds okay actually it's pretty nice it's above average loud enough for you know watching YouTube videos maybe some some uh, internet radio streaming while you're cooking or doing whatever you want to do um, not bad at all there right um, quickly in terms of software that's pre-installed I just want to show you the Samsung control center which isn't uh, isn't too bad although what it does do is um, kind of makes it a little bit more complicated to turn on and off uh, Wi-Fi I wish there was just a one button Wi-Fi on and off but there isn't it just brings up this uh, brings up this uh, easy settings page so here you've got uh, USB um, sleep wake and charge sorry sleep and charge battery life extender limits the charge to 80 percent so if you want to make sure your batteries last as long as possible quick start is Samsung's uh, kind of caching system for um, no it's uh, I think it's late install so late run of some programs so it brings you the desktop before it uh, before it loads up everything in the background quiet mode so you can have a fan off uh, speed boot so we've got quick start and speed boot I'm gonna have to see what the difference is between those two speed boot hasn't actually been set up yet on this and then we've got Intel rapid start as well so three quick start technologies there I don't know uh, quite what the difference between all three of them is but working together they obviously give us the 25 second boot time express cache so of course this is also part of the um, you know quick start uh, features but mostly I think this is for you know in use scenarios uh, just to answer a question in the background um, the 16 gigs cache is not something you can store your stuff into it is it is held um, um, invisible by express cache um, so there's all, all the Samsung um, battery power modes there's an eco mode as well and it's also actually telling you how much battery life we're using right now which is very useful right now it's using 9 watts I've got Wi-Fi on and I've got um, screen brightness right up. Let's take that down to 50% on the screen brightness. Let's see what happens. Down to 7 watts already. I'm guessing if I turn the uh, the wireless off, which I will do, this is well worth having a little test. Uh, we'll probably see that go down even further. Then if I switch eco mode on, which we're going to do now which takes the processor down to 800 megahertz so a Core i5 at 800 megahertz is pretty much uh, it's just probably 20 to 50 percent faster than a dual core netbook so it really is still pretty usable and because you've got express cache and especially for people that are using um, SSDs it, uh, it's still a very very usable uh, amount of um, CPU, CPU power so we're down to 7.5 what 7.3 that's probably going to go down to 6.5 and probably lower. I've tested this down to five five watts. Um, there'll be things going on in the background right now as as Windows looks for updates as Express Cache starts working as well. Right, uh, wireless LAN. Um, you don't need to know about that. Bluetooth there. Um, it is a gig Ethernet um, uh, Ethernet display settings are there and that's pretty much it there's a sound alive setting here which is Ooh. Ooh, okay so maybe I should check this out 
switching it to music mode and going let me give you some feedback on how that sounds oh yeah music mode is quite nice film mode is a kind of a wide mode okay there's some nice settings there but music seems to be the loudest well speakers speakers are pretty loud no problems there right um, let me I'm going to do one more thing on this section of the video and that will be uh, just the uh, standby but before I do that I want to load uh, make sure Chrome is uh, is loading oh. oh I do hate this I'm going to switch to uh, Wi-Fi on now let's just do the standby test first right I'm going to close this uh, down and we'll see how quickly it comes out of uh, standby so close that let's watch the, the lamps here to see whether that when that goes off it's still working still working still working and that's off now okay so let's see how quickly it comes out of standby zero one two whoa <laughs> 2.5 seconds not a problem I, I think that's uh, that's fast that's much faster than your standard um, laptops that have even been optimized so the mp530 maybe I can do that here if it's still on um, that takes four or five seconds that's f maybe three and a half okay what's a second between friends it's pretty fast two and a half seconds so that's pretty good right then that's the end of that part in the next part I'm going to do some application testing so we're going to get uh, Chrome installed, run that SunSpider test, uh, do some uh, hard drive speed tests, uh, maybe 3D graphics and CPU tests uh, on Cinebench, uh, and then take questions from the chat session in the background. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, check out part three, uh, and check out ultrabooknews.com for more Ultrabook information. Thanks for watching.